Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Perhaps this is your first time joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust that you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. We want to continue to pray for our nation and those who are in leadership. We want to pray for our local region and community. We also want to pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world. Perhaps you have a special unspoken request. It's a perfect time to make that known to God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for the abundance of all things and including us in your plans. Father, we pray for the direction of our nation. We pray for the influence of your word, your spirit, the church of the living God upon the direction of this nation. Father, we also pray for our local community. We pray that the Holy Ghost will continue to influence and impact this region and our community. We also pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. We pray that you open up the windows of heaven and pour out, God, your great resource of the love of God upon your people. Father, lastly, we remember our brothers and sisters around the world and pray that you will build a hedge of protection around them. We ask all these things in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said, Amen. Well, I just want to share with you just a couple things that I have on my heart this morning rather than um, get a text and... Uh, give an illustration from a text. I just want to talk to us about a few things. Um, I couldn't help but notice that our infamous Dr. Fauci has emerged again, taking center stage, talking about already another variant of the COVID-19 virus that is on the horizon and on the radar in other places. Um, this, I think, represents something to us and for us that we are all a part of a new norm. Um, there is something in my nature and there is something in your nature that is anticipating um, an end to this or a getting beyond this or... Uh, a resuming back to some sense of normalcy. I, do, I don't want to be pessimistic. Um, I, I try to be uh, optimistic in every situation. However, I think the reality is, is that we are part of a new norm. I think that what this pandemic has done, I think with the emergence or maybe just the unveiling on a greater, on a greater scale, the political forces, that have revealed spiritual wickedness in high places to the degree that we've never uh, been privy to uh, ever before, in my lifetime anyway. There are things that are developing so quickly and so rapidly that are molding and shaping our way of life that I think as God's people that we need to be in tandem with this, at least, at least talking about what I believe are some spiritual things that we need uh, to discuss. And I think that survival in the end time, and I'm using that term end time broadly, um, but survival from this point forward um, is not just going to give us a, a sense of survival, but how to thrive I don't like I don't like talking about the word survival without talking about the other side of it, which is great exploits for the kingdom of God. But there's a, a, several things that I want to talk to us about. Regardless of where you are, who you are, what your age is, what your status is uh, in life, and where you are in your walk with God, it is absolutely critical that all of us develop a prayer life. This may be something that um, for some people might just feel like I, you know, I haven't done that yet. And I believe 
having pastored for 27 years, I have come to recognize, um, as well as some of you have perhaps, that there's a lot of people that develop a relationship with the church and maybe not that personal relationship that is offered to us with God. If we're not, care if we're not careful, we will allow people to, to establish a vicarious relationship with God through the church or through other people without, without answering that personal divine call that every single individual is invited to through the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I believe that where we are right now, it is absolutely essential that every single person establish a prayer life. You establish a relationship with God that is sustained by prayer. The Church of the Living God, I know just here at Cornerstone, we facilitate that. Just recently, we've had to move out of our prayer room because of the emergence of our, our preschool. But we have pre-service prayer right here in uh, our auditorium before every single service. That is something that every single child of God should be taking advantage of to maximize everything that we can get out of a church service. The other thing is having a place in your home where you pray every single day. You might have, it might have to be in your bedroom with a closed door, several closed door, put some distance between you and, and all of the activity going on in your home. Maybe you have children, uh, maybe you have uh, situations in your house where uh, you have to get away from certain um, activities. Everybody needs to have a place in your home where you say, this is where I pray. This is where I reach out. This is where I touch God and God touches me. The other thing that I believe that is essential for us to establish as becoming part of the new norm is the fact that we are renewed day by day in the Holy Ghost. This renewal is not something that is seasonal. This renewal is something that is available to us all the time, everywhere. And I believe that's what, what is happening is, is, is the new norm that, that is taking place outside the four walls of our church and outside of our lives is creating an environment for us where we are, are being what we're supposed to be. I know that might sound strange and it might sound interesting, but there's always been people that are living out on the edge, people that are living out on uh, the back 40 of what the church is really doing. I believe this is time for all of us to shore up and experience the great relationship that is being offered to us through the power of the gospel. Daily prayer, and daily renewal in the Holy Ghost. I believe that if we are experiencing those types of things, then we can maximize what really happens when we gather together in a church environment. And we begin to pray, we begin to worship God, and we're all recipients of the Word of God. That will help to strengthen us, that will help to establish us, that will help to solidify us regardless of what's going on outside these four walls, regardless of the chaos that seemingly is being propagandized uh, through different news outlets and medias. I don't believe it's the will of God for the church to be afraid. I don't believe it's the will of God for the church to be nervous. I don't believe it's the will of God for the church to be without specific, absolute direction in this hour. And I believe that God is with us the Bible assures us that he's with us always. He is an ever-present help in time of need. So let Dr. Fauci rant. Let Washington do whatever they're going to do. Let all these other forces that are emerging in our culture that are showing themselves part of this incredible infrastructure of spiritual wickedness in high places. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here this morning. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning.